Much like a buffer overflow, we also have something referred to as an integer overflow. And this is similar, as I mentioned, in that more information is passed than the application expects or can handle. So this specific attack pertains to the storing of numbers or integers. So as an example, if 8 bits, which is 0 to 255, is expected, but the user enters a larger value, okay, let's just say 2048, well, that can't be stored in 8 bits. So the program would behave unexpectedly and potentially respond with an error or even crashing. And you might think to yourself, well, that sounds kind of stupid. Why would the application just simply crash if it gets something it doesn't expect? Well, typically it doesn't. Okay, this is an oversimplified example, obviously. However, there are things within a program that just happen because the designer did not expect them to happen. Okay, sometimes it takes a while for a hacker or for a malicious person to find these things. And that's kind of where fuzzing comes into play and some other attack uh, methodologies they use to just try every single combination, try all different types of things, kind of throw it all against the wall and see what sticks mentality, right? When that happens, if it gets more than it can handle, if the application is not written to fail gracefully, then it will throw some type of error and perhaps give up the remote code execution that we talked about previously. So we need to make sure that the applications, wherever possible, will either sanitize that input and not allow it to be processed so that it doesn't run into these types of errors, or if it does happen to fail, have some type of routine built in so that it can fail gracefully or give some type of stock error message that doesn't give away too much information of what's going on behind the scenes.